Folks, the, the police chief and the mayor uh, held a news conference, and um, uh, Nakima Levy Armstrong, uh, y'all are familiar with her. We've had her on the show numerous times when she was in the end with, with, of course, leading the NAACP chapter there. She just got sick and tired of listening to what they had to say. Uh, watch this. No, hold on, hold on. Chief Huffman, no, no, do not. Okay, I'm not a threat. I don't have a gun. Okay, don't treat me like I'm a threat. This is what I would call the anatomy of a cover up. This is unacceptable. I'm sorry, it is. When I agreed to work with you on the work group, we talked about the importance of transparency and accountability. And here, what we are seeing is business as usual. And you know this, Amelia. You know this, Jacob. I don't know how you guys slept that night. I couldn't sleep that night. Tears from a mother's perspective, thinking about what happened. I saw the picture of Amir, he looks like a boy. My son is 17 years old. He has slept on his friend's couches for sleepovers. So we cannot sit here and whitewash this and pretend that it's okay. You knew that I was not gonna stand for police violence and a push for accountability, yet you asked me to be a part of the work group, and I knew what I thought I was signed up for. This isn't what I signed up for. I understand if you're not comfortable having me continue to co-chair, that's your prerogative. I signed up to help bring recommendations because we're tired of being killed, we're tired of the cover-ups, we're tired of the excuses. And to hide behind the St. Paul Police Department the deadliest police force in the state of Minnesota is unacceptable. You all had no business agreeing to carry out a, a warrant, and now you're claiming that's part of their investigation. You don't know. Well, why the hell did you all sign up to do this in the first place? There was a homicide that happened at one something in the morning on Hennepin Avenue. Someone was killed, and then the person drove away in a black SUV. They're still at large in Minneapolis potentially a threat to residents. But you all go do something for St. Paul police, and now you're trying to hide behind that decision. It's not acceptable. We are ready for change. When the people voted to reelect you, Jacob, they not only showed that they wanted to see a new leader, right? Not saying you're not the person who got reelected, you got reelected. But what they were expecting is a new beginning. That's why they gave you more power and authority. So that is what we want to see as the residents of Minneapolis. We don't want to see cover-ups. We don't want to see whitewashing. People are asking very simple questions that have still not been answered. Amelia, you're saying you want to be the chief? Then act like it. Demonstrate integrity. Don't cover up for what those cops did. If they knew that the kid had a gun as he started waking up, say, drop your weapon. They didn't do that. No One cop opened fire and took the life of a child who was trying to go back into his blanket. Any mom can see what happened there. So I can't tolerate the whitewashing. I'm sorry, y'all. We can't do this. Nakima joins us right now. Nakima, um, uh, it's always good to have you. I hate to have to have you under, under these circumstances. Um, you said in that video, Minneapolis was helping St. Paul. Uh, explain that, folks, because Minneapolis and St. Paul are two different cities. Yes, they are. When this incident initially happened, the chief of the Minneapolis Police Department put out a statement saying that the Minneapolis Police Department was executing a warrant on behalf of the St. Paul Police Department as a part of a homicide investigation. And today, the St. Paul Police Department is now trying to cover their butts. They put out a statement claiming that they never asked the Minneapolis Police Department for a no-knock warrant. They said the Minneapolis Police Department insisted upon a no-knock warrant. And that's how all of this transpired. Interesting. Has there been any response from the Minneapolis Police Chief, the Minneapolis Mayor, to what St. Paul said? Has the St. Paul Mayor uh, come out and said anything? There has been no response from the Minneapolis Mayor the St. Paul mayor, the Minneapolis police chief, or the St. Paul police chief. We ha still have a lot more questions than answers. From my perspective, it's very clear that a cover-up is at work, and they thought they were going to be able to get away with it 
because there was a young black man in possession of a firearm. But thank God for the family of Amir Locke, who could give us information about the fact that he was licensed to carry a firearm. He had his conceal and carry permit, and he was well within his Second Amendment rights to have a firearm on his possession. Um, you mentioned being a part of the work group. There were, there were a lot of things that took place after the death of George Floyd, but there were other shootings prior to George Floyd. Um, so were no-knock warrants banned? Were they stricken uh, from uh, the city of Minneapolis? What's the deal there? So in November of 2020, the uh, Minneapolis Police Department and the mayor said that they had updated their uh, no-knock warrant uh, policy and essentially uh, said that they were placing restrictions upon the use of no-knock warrants. Prior to that policy change, Minneapolis had conducted approximately 139 no-knock warrants in the city. There were folks who critiqued uh, Minneapolis's uh, proposal, saying that it still left too much discretion for police officers to use no-knock warrants in circumstances that were not like a hostage crisis or exigent circumstances. Uh, and we see that at play here. If there was a policy put in place in November of 2020 restricting the use of no-knock warrants, then why was it so easy for Minneapolis police officers to get a no-knock warrant in this situation? But again, they've tried to cover their tracks. They've tried to hide behind the St. Paul Police Department and the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension when they should be held accountable for providing information in this situation, and they should be held accountable for the police murder of Amir Locke. And I'm being very clear in calling this murder. All right, folks, back to our Roadblock Unfiltered video in just one moment. looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 